Praise the Lord. You've reached Pastor Priscilla Harmon by the word of God. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you because of the sincerity, the holiness of your call. We thank you, God, because you protect, you preserve, and you keep separated according to your perfect will. I thank you, God, for everything you've done. In Jesus' name I pray, the holy and righteous one, the honorable one, the bright and morning star, the king of glory, the great I am, the line of Judah. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The wheel in the middle of the wheel. We worship and praise and glorify you. And we honor you for who you are. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that keeps and preserves unto your righteousness. Thank you, Lord, for only you can do that. Only you. Thank you, God. May you continue to destroy all unrighteousness, all the adversaries' wars, everything that exalts itself over the knowledge and will of who you are. Thank you, Father. Thank you, holy and righteous. true you can do exceptionally exceedingly above all that we could ever ask or think according to your power because it's about what you have what you behold Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your spirit of truth that testifies of you. Thank you, God. And all will know the spirit of truth. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus was right. He was right when he gave his disciples instructions before he left. And John, in the Gospel of John, he told his disciples, I'm going to give you a comfort. 
a comforter that this word will never be able to explain or understand or receive because they are spiritually in darkness and they will reject because they have not the spirit of truth and they will be deceived and be delusioned by much. But the disciples would have this comforter and this comforter would lead them and guide them in the spirit of truth and love. that will be there through whatever is going on in the world. The spirit of truth that the world knoweth not. The spirit of truth that the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. The world can't see the spirit of truth because it's too busy looking at carnality. Neither knoweth it. For he dwelleth in the vessels that desire the spirit of truth. Amen. There's something when God brings about knowledge. So now we see why the Bible says many shall perish. Because they will not desire to see the spirit of truth. They'll be focusing on humanity over the spirit of truth. A delusion, a facade. Ha, la, 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 la. But he gave them something that would be with them to the very end of the world. The comforter sent unto you from the Father. Even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you know the difference. By the that can only come from God. And the comforter shall keep and preserve you. Comfort that shall keep you from the way, from the mind of the world, from the acceptance of the world, from the partaking of the world, from the dependency of the world. And that's why they were able to endure and not be concerned of the world. They were in it, but not of it because they had the comforter to keep them from being. You can't keep yourself. It would be done by the God. Now unto him who is able as the comforter to present you before his presence. You can't even present yourself. See, before a human king would request and those would come to the king to present themselves before the king. But we're not dealing with humanity. We're dealing with divinity. And the problem is some are still in that mindset. They want to be presented before humanity. They've taken the lower standard, the higher standard, before him. 
the now unto you that can keep you and present you. You can't present yourself here. The only why, eternal, immortal, and visible king of glory, the God creator. That's why you don't care about the ways of the world. That's why you don't care about what's going on not in alignment with God. That was the inner strength that the disciples had. And he warned them and told them, I'm going to send you a comfortable picture because I'm leaving. And when he left them, he sent them home. And that's why you saw a change in their life. Because the comforter can do what no human can do. It's the comforter that makes the difference. It's the comforter. According to June 24. And we don't depend on the comforter. We depend on people. That's why you will quite often see people exalted by people. And then when contention and division come, pull one another down. That's people. That's not the comforter. That's why the disciples was able to be kept even into the time of their death. They were presented by God. Comforter. They were given the spirit of truth. And those who did not have the spirit of truth lacked the understanding of even knowing what was going on. What they thought was of significance, was of little significance. For the spirit of truth knew it was deception. It wasn't going to keep nor present. Would you turn with me to Jeremiah 15, verse 16? Jeremiah 15, verse 16. Mm, mm, mm. You know, um, Jesus always functioned on the authority authority of God. The comfort will always testify on whose authority all things are being done. Because you do know there's more than one authority, but there's only one authentic authority. All power, all knowledge and wisdom honor, glory, omnipotent, omniscient in my presence. The Bible says that we are to internalize, meditate on great teachings and principles found in the scriptures given to us by the comforts of the Holy We can only receive it from the Holy Spirit. And so in Jeremiah 15, verse 16, it reads as that. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. 
For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Here, eating symbolizes assimilating and making the teaching a part of one's being, finding joy and strength in the divine guidance provided in the scriptures. We shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded forth out of the mouth. This is a way of expression, a deep engagement, a deep intimacy, a deep dependency, a deep acknowledgement that you have the spirit of truth that draws you with this word to live in accordance to what is pleasing and acceptable in his sight. Thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. It is the comforter that presents you. It is the comforter that gives you joy. It is the comforter. It is the comforter that keeps you in his standing, his righteous standing. For I am called by thy name. O oh Lord God, it is the comforter that operates on God's authority. Thy words were found. The phrase is illuminating a discovery, a reception, a embrace, a acknowledgement of God's word. A divine revelation that you can only receive from the comfort. A divine revelation that you can only understand from the comfort. That's why when Jesus spoke both of them, only those who God wanted to receive understood what he was saying. The rest had ears but could not receive. They could not hear in the spiritual realm what he was saying. So they took it to mean what they wanted it to mean with no understanding of spiritual revelation. Spoke to a multitude. Because it is the comforter that gives you the understanding of the spiritual meaning behind the spiritual key. I did eat them. In other words, they were internalizing. Jeremiah was internalizing. He was assimilating the nutrition that comes from the comforter the spirit of God, the authority of God to understand what is being released. That's why everybody don't receive the same understanding. They're not being authorized by God to know. Because God determines your understanding. God determines the authority of who will receive and who will not. It's all about God's authority. And you can only receive the understanding. God gives you the understanding. That's why Peter knew who Jesus was, but the disciples did. But yet Jesus chose all the disciples. But Peter knew. He only knew. Because God authorized him to know. 
And Jesus explained and said, you would have never known that had my father not given you the authority to know. There are things that we will only know by the authority of Christ Jesus. There are things that we will only know by the authority of God. Internalizing, assimilating it, revealing it, and making it known. Mm, 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 mm. And that comes from the comforter. So that humanity can never take or have access to anything except God allow it. And we're living in the age of delusion, deception, where humanity think they can orchestrate, control, and know all things. The spirit of deception, the spirit of delusion. The Bible said he will release it, God. Why would God release a spirit of delusion? In Thessalonians, he specifically said it because he knew many would not receive the comfort. We know that to be true in Acts. When they were preaching, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and many receive outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But Simeon wanted to purchase it. And they told him that he needed to repent, that his money perished, because what he was trying to buy was a gift of God. The comforter is the gift of God. And we're living in the last end of time where many think their money can buy the things of God that money will never be able to buy. That is the wisdom of God. That is the foundation that shall never be able to be destroyed that God has laid. It has to be given by God. And God knows all things. That's why some won't receive. A reason they want it, they'll never get it. That's why he didn't give it to Simeon. Simeon wanted them to lay hands so that he could receive the Holy because he saw the Holy Ghost as being money. He saw the outpouring of the Holy Ghost as being a means of money, making money from. It. And so he wanted it. The Bible says, and when Simeon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Give me also this power that on whosoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. He wanted it for the wrong reason. That's why everybody don't believe. And some you think have, they're not operating on authority of God's power. They're operating under delusion, another spirit. And because they're operating under another spirit, they think it's the spirit of God. That's why he says many could be deceived. Because there is a spirit of this world that has great deception. 
but it will never deceive those comforted by his spirit, the spirit of truth. See, the spirit of truth will not be deceived. That's why it's called the spirit of truth. That's why you have to worship him in the spirit of truth. The authority is in the spirit of truth. And you can't take the spirit of truth. You can't get the spirit of truth to be given by God for you to receive. No others can receive it except God giving. And so they had a problem with Jesus because they could not be the spirit of truth. They had land. They had money. They had wealth, but they could not receive the spirit. They had military power and organizational abilities. They could hinder their efforts temporarily, but they could never stop the plan and will and work of God. They could sneak around and listen to Jesus' message, but they could not receive understanding. They could come and ask Jesus questions, but still could not understand because they did not want to receive authority from the spirit of truth. And so they never knew the spirit of truth. This world, the Bible clearly said, when John told them what they would, when, when it was written in the writings of John, what they should receive, said that they won't. And he gave them the reason they won't know. He said, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Why the world can't see? Spirit of truth. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come. Even Jesus is saying, comforter will come to you. The world wants to make people think that you need to come to them. But the comfort said, I'll come to you. He said, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comfort that ye may abide with you forever. He said, I'll do it. Whatever is asked in my name according to my will, because I'm the comforter that I gave you. I came to you and gave it to you. Isn't it interesting the world wants to make you think you need to come to them to read? When the Lord said, I'll come to you and give it to you. Something that the world cannot see and shall not receive. Because the world wants it for another reason. To control it, to control you. And the authority on which comforter operates under the authority of God. Be careful who you're trying to get from. Wow. 
Be careful who you are trying to operate under authority other than God. Be careful the authority because the authority has to be And let me give you a background of Jeremiah 15 before I finish the rest of that. Jeremiah 15 and that particular chapter, he is expressing his distress and frustration. Have you ever been frustrated? and in distress. Jeremiah felt himself in difficult period. He speaks of hardships that he's facing. He's feeling abandoned. Have you ever felt abandoned and persecuted? Hardship? But he's going to God. Because when you trust in God and you go through things that are peculiar. Peculiar meaning you know it's not normal. You know some things are coming from wicked. Plot, scams, schemes, flesh, operating, spiritual operating. That is not God. You go to God because you have a relationship. And you're going to go to the one that you know is able. You're not going to waste your time with people that's not able. You don't care what they say. You don't care what they try to do. You're not even focusing. You're going to God for those who have a relationship, a true relationship with God. One that is founded on the spirit of truth. Because you know what truth. Because the spirit of truth will warm you inwardly, internalize. He will assimilate and reveal. And you'll go to the source of authority over all authority. Despite his dedication to delivering God's message, see, Jeremiah was under future because of the message gave him. Jesus was under persecution because of the message spoke on behalf of God. All the prophets was under persecution because of their message. But the message was coming from God. They were authorized. They were speaking when God gave them to speak. And the people came up against God when they came up against them. So he's being persecuted for speaking what God told him to speak. So he went to God. After all, God gave him the message. That's why you can't get into everybody's messages and you don't have the understanding. And so, despite his dedication to delivering God's messages, Jeremiah faced opposition and suffering. And in this chapter, chapter 15 of Jeremiah, God responds, reassuring Jeremiah of his presence and advising him to repent and turn back to God for strength. Now, why would Jeremiah have to repent and turn back to God for strength if he's preaching God's messages? Because sometimes when prosecution comes and hardship because you're preaching what God is giving you, 
you become a little unstable if you allow the people's opinions and their ways to sway you, to intimidate you. So God told Jeremiah, don't be frustrated and don't be in distress. I gave you the message. And if you focus on people, you're going to be frustrated and distressed. Repent and come back to me. Repent. Stop focusing on people. They didn't give you the message, I did. And if they would have took heed to the message, they would have known it came from the spirit of truth. But they have not the spirit of truth. So they can't receive the message. So they'll make it what they want to make it about. Only what they can receive understanding of the world but not the understanding of my spiritual mess. They'll take the spiritual and turn it into natural. They'll take what's holy and righteous and knowledgeable and full of understanding, mercy and compassion and mark it. la 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 Humanize it, demonize it, and control it, and lose the intent of the message. So he told Jeremiah, repent, turn back to me for your strength. Now the operative underscoring of the repent is to get your strength. He lost his strength in the Lord by being concerned more about people than God. Because his strength was in God. His strength was in obeying God. His strength was in trusting God. His strength was in dependent upon God. But he allowed people's opinions, their looks, their mockery, and all their negative actions against him for a message that God gave him to make him lose his strength in the Lord. In other words, he was moved too much concerned about humanity over God. He forgot the God who called him. He forgot the God who gave him the message. He forgot the God who strengthened him in the first place. And he was beginning to put his faith and trust in humanity. So God said, you better repent and turn back to me for your strength. Why are you worried about death? That's why I gave you a message to warn them. And if they had taken the message, then what I'm about to do would not come upon them. Because I don't send a message that I don't fulfill except they repent. The overall theme around the challenges that the prophet Jeremiah experienced was that God's encouragement to preserve in you and your faith. God's encouragement to persevere in faith. God's encouragement to persevere in faith. When you are doing what thus says the Lord, do you not know that God will encourage you? You don't need people to encourage you. God will encourage you. 
He will encourage you to persevere in faith. Jeremiah needed to persevere in faith. He had become so distressed by people's opinions, by their rejection, by their actions, by their doings. Because, you know, the devil gets mad when God sends a message to tell the people you better become more sensitive to God's ways. You better become more sensitive to desiring to please God. You better stop some of these actions that you're doing that is displeasing in God's sight. You better take God at his word. You better be serious about the things of God. The devil gets mad. He's against everything for God. It's an unreconcilable difference. And he knows he don't have the power of God. And that irritates him the most. And he don't want you to know. So he sends delusions. Make you think he's great. Make you think he's more knowledgeable. Make you think he can do something. And Jeremiah was feeling the attacks of the adversary for doing the will of God. Every prophet that spoke and did the will of God, they came up against the people that God was warning. To draw them out of destruction. So God gave Jeremiah a reassuring response. My presence is here with you. Repent and turn back to me for your strength. See, the problem with humanity is when they go through something, for doing right for God. I'm not talking about doing wrong. There's a difference. When you go through something for doing what God tells you to do or tells you to say, you cannot allow people to make you change your mind about what God has you to do. For the adversary will come up against you to make you doubt God. And then you begin to try to please people. And God said, no, you got to repent. Because you focusing on people. You used to focus on me. Now you're focusing on people. And if you focus on people, your message and your actions will always be to try to please people. And that will never please God. God's messages are not to please you. God's messages are to impart wisdom and understanding into your life because you will perish because of lack of knowledge. And knowledge is the fear of God, which is wisdom. And some things that are being said and done, if you feared God, they would not be done or said. So, Jeremiah chapter 15 is allowing you to know that you can go through challenges for being obedient to God. Look at the disciples, look at Jesus, look at all the prophets. That's why God sent Jesus. They killed all the prophets that God sent. The Bible says every prophet was killed. They didn't want to hear truth. 
They didn't want to receive the spirit of truth. Because the spirit of truth don't make you feel good. It reveals the necessity of repentance unto a holy and righteous God. It reveals the necessity of honoring a holy and righteous God. It reveals the necessity that God is judging this matter. And God's judgment is righteous. That's why Song of Solomon in Ecclesiastic in his last chapter well stated a very profound writing that many will overlook because they necessary. In chapter 12 and verses 13 and 14, he says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. You can't hear unless you hear from the revelation, from the impartation of the authorization from God. Who else you are here? What was never said. You will devise in your own mind what you want it to be. You'll miss what God is saying and you will misappropriate and make it what you want to hear what he's saying. And God says, fear me and keep my commandments. And everybody, well, we're not under the law. No, we're not under law. We're under mercy and grace, but we don't have a liberty to keep being dishonoring to God. Because those who fear God will not continue in paths that are dishonoring to God. I don't care how you got there. There comes a point where you receive knowledge and understanding that is wrong. And you repent and go back to God. Jeremiah, God said, repent and return back to me for your strength. Your strength to remain pleasing in my sight. Your strength to obey me. Your strength to follow me. Your strength to reject the opposition that's coming up against you. Because if you don't, you just go with the flesh. He said, this is the whole duty of humanity, to fear me. Because fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. That's why many perish, they don't fear God. Not the fear that we perceive as the word is the fear of the knowledge of knowing who God really is. Do you not know that God can end everything in a twinkling of an eye? Do you not know that there's nothing that's ever been created that God cannot stop? There is none one greater than God. There is no one holier than God. There is no one more righteous than God. There is no one more knowledgeable than God. There is no one that beholds more understanding than God. 
There is no one more powerful than God. There is no one more sovereign than God. There is no one more almighty than God. There is no one more worthy than God. And some are more concerned of others' opinions, likes, dislikes, association, affiliations, approvals, assimilations, acknowledgement over God. Some are more concerned of others' authority over God. There's no one that has more authority than God. There's no one that has more sources than God. And let me clarify everything. Everyone that has an ear to hear from God. There's no one that has more riches than God. And there's a spirit of delusion. And your desire and covet after deception. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Whether every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil. Makes no difference how you find yourself in the predicament you're in. God says, repent and turn back to me. There's a reason he told Jeremiah to repent and turn back to me for your strength. He was becoming weakened by the persecution. You see, persecution tries to wear you down, tries to tear you down. tries to break you down, tries to destroy you because it doesn't want to accept the spirit of truth. It puts evil out of business when the spirit of truth is magnified and made known. You won't follow unrighteousness. We know that to be true. That's why the silversmiths and acts were upset. They didn't care about God. But when the apostles started preaching, make no image of God, they were going to lose money because everybody's making images of their God. And when you converted to Christianity, there was no God to make him to so they saw themselves going bankrupt out of business. And they were angry because they couldn't sell the goddess Diana and make all the money in Ephesus. You see, some people, they're not concerned about your God, but they are concerned about their dollar sign. Just like they weren't concerned about God when they put Jesus on the cross. They were concerned about their position and their position gave them finances. You better be careful of the authority that you operate on behalf. So the Bible says, I did eat them. I eternalized the message, the word from God. I allowed it 
to enter into my inner being and strengthen me. Strengthen me in knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Strengthen me because the outward man daily perishes, but the inner man is renewed daily through the impartation of the nourishment that we receive from God. Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Jeremiah, repent. Turn back to me for your strength, your joy. The devil wants to take your joy because your joy in the Lord is your strength. And he doesn't have no joy. He doesn't have the relationship with God. The transformative impact of the indwelling spirit, the spirit of truth, that when you hear truth, it ignites. When you see the spirit of truth, it ignites. Because truth knows truth. That's how Peter could say, you are the son of God. He had received the spirit of truth from God. But the others hadn't received it yet. And I did say yet. Because God was starting a good work in their lives. They were blind. But yet he selected them. They didn't know who he was, but yet he selected them because God knows the future. And then he outpoured the comforter and they knew him unto death. It's impossible to have tasted and turn away from it. And some are delusional. They never tasted it. It was a facade of deception. Because Jesus said, Father, everyone you've given me into thy hand, I care. If you're in his hands, he's going to keep you. If you were never in his hand, that's the difference. But if you were in his hand, he going to keep you. That's why he kept you. Everybody, repent. Come back. Come back. Come back. You were in my hand. You're walking away from me. Come back. I didn't lose you. You walked away. You're being driven by emotionalism. You've been driven by frustration and distress to try to get acceptance from people. I'm telling you to tell them to repent. And now you want their acceptance. Everybody doing what they think is right in their own sight. And I'm telling you to give them a message to let them know. I see it all. And I have a problem with everybody. Repent. I don't care how you got this. Don't tell me that somebody did this to you. I don't care. Get out of it. 
and stay out of it. Repent and come back to me. Have ears to hear from me and eyes to see of me that only I can reveal to the comforter. Because we're living in end time. And it's my joy that gives you a rejoicing heart. A transformative impact of God in your inner being. And I'm not just talking about preaching the word. I'm speaking about living it. Living for God. That's daily living for God. Not being zapped by the adversary. Not being deceived by the adversary. You see, God's wisdom brings joy and rejoicing. And when you understand and accept his wisdom, you have a positive, uplifting spiritual experience. In him. I don't care what's going on. When you know you're right with God, you really don't care about some things. Because the one that means the most to you is the one you're going to keep your mind on. That's why the adversary will try to use people they think are close to. Because the adversary know if somebody doesn't is not close to you, don't care what they say, you don't care what they want, you don't care what they try to do. But somebody close to you get to you. That's why the adversary does that. That's why Jesus told me, my family is the one that does the will of God. He was letting the adversary know. You can ch come up and get in my family all you want to to come up against me. They'll just be a person like everybody else. And God's sight, they better do the will of God. They want to be my family. See, you have to understand from the comfort to the spirit of truth why God spoke certain things. Because he knows much about the adversary. He knows a lot about the adversary. That's why the adversary tried to get into the disciples. They were close to Jesus. They were around Jesus. And Jesus had selected them. But it doesn't work when you obey God and you receive what God is giving you. For I am called by thy name. Who's calling you? On whose authority are you operating under? Because there's no greater authority than God. And if you know you're operating on God's authority, you don't care what humans say. Because when you stand before God, you're going to be out accountable unto God. Some of y'all blaming what somebody did. He did this to me. She did this to me. They did this. Da, 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 da. God said, what did you do? You better repent and come back to me. You see, Jeremiah acknowledges identification with God. 
his belonging and divine affiliation. Who are you trying to belong to? And what affiliation are you edifying over God? Being called by God's name implies a special relationship and a recognition of a divine calling or purpose. We have all been called to offer up our body as a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable, a reasonable service to be pleasing and acceptable in his sight. A special significant relationship with him. Jeremiah 15, 16 reflects a personal, intimate connection with God's word. Oh, yes, it does. Eating underscores the profound internalization of the impartation of his nutrients that builds up his body. To be knowledgeable of what is acceptable to God as he reveal it to you through the spirit of truth. That's why the Bible said in Revelation, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. You can't read it and receive understanding except a comforter gives you the spirit of truth. You can't hear it and receive understanding except the comforter gives you the spirit of truth. And some of you want to take God's message and make it cardinal that has no foundation for God. That will not give you joy. That will not give you spiritual uplifting and intimacy with him. That will not give you wisdom and understanding. That will not give you knowledge, joy, rejoicing of the heart. That will not give you pleasing and acceptable in his sight. Isn't it strange that after Jesus got baptized with the Holy Spirit in the writings of Matthew 4, 4, and he goes into the wilderness to be tried by the devil, that he tells the devil, Something very profound. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And what are we into today? What have we prioritized over God? Hear from the spirit of truth. Hear from the comforter that the world will never receive because it can't see it. Because it has not it. Repent and turn back to the Lord. The deception of the adversary.
You can only hear and receive by the spirit of truth. And it is God that imparts. It is God that gives. It is God that reveals. It is God that upholds. It is God that will quicken your spirit and make you get it right if you want to know truth. You have to ask him and he'll come to you and give it to you. And some of you are trying to give people responsibility over you that God never authorized. God's encouragement to persevere in faith. Jeremiah had to be encouraged by God. We all have to repent. Everybody has to repent. Everyone has to repent. Everyone. And return back to the foundation that God has established. He is so loving. He is so forgiving. He is so knowledgeable. And we've been created for his pleasure. But we better know the limitations. We better understand the principles and standards of his pleasures. It is not worldly pleasures. It is godly pleasures. There's a difference in God's kingdom and worldly principle. It's like the world has their riches. God has his riches. Just like the world has their pleasures. God has his pleasures. Just like the world has their authority. God has his authority. Just like the world has their spirit. The spirit of delusion, the spirit of worldliness, the spirit of wickedness. God has his spirit, the spirit of the comforter, the spirit of the Holy Spirit. God's encouragement to persevere and faith. This is a new day. This is a new year. Old things need to be passed and pushed aside. Behold, new things should be coming forth. New things is not changing God's standards. It's changing and the way you have received the comforter to know truth. If you're in the hands of God, you can't be plucked out, but you can walk away from his hand. and to others' hands and Jeremiah was leaving God's hands 
because he was more concerned about those not wanting him or liking him or accepting whatever he was doing over God. And that's the way the world works. That's why you have so much. Don't fall for the world's tactics. That's why the body of Christ was established for the assembly. Of the encouragement with humanity. But your primary encouragement comes from God. And the people of God should never be allowing some of the worldly ways to overflow into anything they accept. We cannot be bridging other rituals of religious activities into Christianity. And there's a lot of bridging, sometimes unbeknowingly. We can't get in it. That's what fasting and praying is for to strengthen the inner person. To let the inner man become stronger than the outer. And stop identifying people coming to you and send them to the Lord. As the Lord said, I'll come to you. Tell them to seek the Lord. And if they seek God, God will come to them. Stop doing it the ways of the world. The world always wants you to come to them. Everything is set up for you to come to them. But God's kingdom is for you to come to God, to him. That's the difference. And we have to be careful. We have to be careful. Let God do what God is doing. Trust God. Trust God. Because we're living in latter days. It's going to be a lot of uncovering and revealing from God. Because when you don't take heed to God's messages, he fulfills everything he sends as a warning. God always sends warnings before he passes his actions. He always sends warnings before he passes his actions. That's just what God does. Ask God to show you spiritually the spirit of truth and ask him to allow you to hear spiritually the spirit of truth. Because that's who God is. And never let anybody identify you with God. You see, I'm identified by God. If it's not his principles, I'm not in it. I don't care what you identify me as. I don't identify myself with a denomination. I identify myself with a holy and righteous God. 
that never created your denomination. That's man-made. And that's okay to have it if that's what you want. But make no mistake, no denomination has authority over God. That's why I've dealt with most of denominations. Because if you're authorized by God, then there should be the spirit of truth. And wherever the spirit of truth is edified, that's authority. That's confirmation. That's demonstration. That's revelation. And that's acceptable. That's why you can't get this from schools. I don't put my faith and trust in academic educational systems. You better know God. You have all this software. You have all these books written by humanity. All these software created by humanity. Now you have I, this new technology. You better know God. Because all of this can teach you a doctrine. You have Bibles being rewritten. Don't change or add one thing to the word of God. You have some scripture missing out of some translations of Bibles. You better trust God. God's encouragement to persevere in faith. I didn't say trust the color. I warned y'all about trusting colors. You better trust the heart and mind of God. You better trust the comforter that is the spirit of truth. God's kingdom is not about what we have made the world about. And when you make God's kingdom about what we've made the world about, you bought people's personal agendas. And God's kingdom is greater than personal agendas. That's why Jesus said, my family is who does the work of my father. If it was personal, it would have been just about his family. We wouldn't have been included. 
We weren't born into this family in the physical sense. We're born in the spiritual sense, which is far greater than the physical sense. For those who want to think somebody doing something for somebody, that God was the only one doing. So I can't get into your personal identification. Now, I haven't left the body of Christ. I'm in his hand. It's impossible. I will never leave the Lord. That's impossible. But I will not be identified by elements God has not authorized. And because God is not authorized, I will not accept. <clears throat> See, that's what God does when he selects you. He knows everything. And here Jeremiah, the same prophet who wrote Lamentation, who was in distress and concern, of all that was happening finds himself upset and he has to repent. And when he wrote Lamentation, he was such much in distress because he saw their nakedness. In other words, he saw God uncovering them. Going back to Genesis, when they disobeyed, they were uncovered. Meaning, God removed their covering for all to see their condition that they're in when you walk out of God's covering. Disobedience removes your covering. And if you remain consistently in disobedience, then you'll have a strong delusion. That's why he told Jeremiah, repent and turn back to me. Because Jeremiah was walking outside of his covenant. You can't let the ways of this world pull you away from God. Just because somebody got a problem with you, who cares? That's insignificant. When you're in the will of God. They had a problem with Jesus. He wasn't trying to please everybody. His concern was to please the Father. On whose authority are you respecting more? God's or people? And that is why it is necessary to have a true relationship with God. Meaning you're not going to waver between these opinions. The only thing you're going to fear is the Lord. You're going to truly fear the Lord. Because with the spirit of truth, there's some things that God will deposit you to warn you and if you're sensitive to his warning, some things you're not going to get into. 
You may not even understand it when it's going through. Nobody may not even understand. But years later, God's going to reveal it. The why. That's why you have to trust God. If Jesus would have trusted his mother and father, he would have never went to that cross. Because they would have never wanted him to go to the cross. And that's natural. They don't want to see their son dead. She didn't want to see her son crucified. But this was bigger than his mother and father. This was about God's kingdom. This was not the will of humanity. This was about the will of God. And that's what God was telling him. This is not about the will of humanity. This is about the will of God. Be careful about the will of humanity being over the will of God. Nothing is higher than the will of God. And that's a warning. And Jesus was explaining to them, this is about the will of God. Even when he told Peter, this is more than the will of man, the will of humanity. I know you love me, Peter, and you don't want me to have to go through what you think I may have to go through because you know the people don't like me. So, I understand, but this is greater than the will of humanity. This is about the will of God that knows better. Because if Jesus had not fulfilled what he did and had listened to Peter, Peter would have never received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so the Lord said, this is about the will of God. Don't find yourself entrapped in areas that are used as distraction that will lure you out of the hands of God. Now, I preach all the time and teach all the time here. But I encourage people to connect with a body of Christ. Ask God. He'll direct you to the body of Christ. Every place may not be for you. And God understands that. But connect and God will lead you where he wants you to be. He'll lead you where he wants you to be. Some may ask, well, where are you at? So that we can come and be a part of your church and connect with you. Right now, I don't have a specific location. But when God tells me, I will let you know. And to then, I'm going to continue to do what thus says the Lord. God's encouragement to persevere in faith. If you value your life, and if you value God and what God has done in your life or what God can do in your life, then take everything you do for God and the highest integrity, and the highest sincerity, and the highest excellency that you know how. It is a great necessity to trust a holy and righteous God. God has been too good 
Let God come and indwell within you. Let him indwell within you. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything under the authorization of humanity. I'm functioning under the authority of God. Always make sure you know the authority and which you are functioning under because we're living in very perilous times of great deception. I've never known so many people to make people think that people are into something that you don't even know nothing about. And you have to be very careful, very, very careful very careful very careful and jeremiah saw himself becoming engulfed with that that's why god told him to repent and turn back to him because if you don't you will find yourself being pulled and different directions and not know what God is doing. Let's bring this to close. God is faithful and sometimes we forget the faithfulness is God. We do. We forget the faithfulness of God. We forget the faithfulness of God. I don't care what somebody may have started in. I don't care what somebody may have thought all this stuff was about or anything. I don't know anything about that. But what God is saying, when he brings illumination, when he brings light to you, that is to get you to stop and consider what you're doing. And go to God for truth. Ask God. And God will give you the understanding that you need. Just ask God. For God is the only one that can give you the understanding that you need. I am so thankful that I'm dependent and trusting in a holy and righteous God. Because I was called by God. I don't have an allegiance to anyone or any otherization or any church affiliation over God. God is my allegiance, the Lord God. I, I, I don't have no, no affiliation. I'm not into your family of God versus your personal family. I, I'm not into that. I'm just preaching and teaching what the word of God says. And you can go to God for your life, for your situation, and get him to give you clarification. The spirit of truth will reveal the spirit of truth. Let us bring this to closure. Keep your eyes on God and you won't fall into the spirit of deception. Because the spirit of truth will reside and you shall see God moving. When God orchestrates and do what no one can do, he operates in a miraculous way. Know that God is great and his mercy is great. Oh, he's worthy.
Jeremiah learned the faithfulness of God. Isaiah learned the faithfulness of God. Micah learned the faithfulness of God. Joshua learned the faithfulness of God. Abraham learned the faithfulness of God. Mary learned the faithfulness of God. Elizabeth learned the faithfulness of God. Sarah learned the faithfulness of God. Moses learned the faithfulness of God. Matthew, John, James, they all learned the faithfulness of God. Ezekiel learned the faithfulness of God. Habakkuk and Zephaniah, Haggai and Zechariah and Malachi and Joel and Amos and Obadiah and Hosea and Daniel and Ezra and Nehemiah and Esther and Job, they all learned the faithfulness of God. Hezekiah learned the faithfulness of God. There is something about taking heed to the spirit of truth. You learn the faithfulness of God. Because you desire to be under the authority of God that is above all, that changes not. And you receive what you can never receive from humanity. That's why the disciples really couldn't do what they could do and do they receive the comfort. And it's called the comforter because it keeps you. It comforts you. When humanity can't comfort you, God can. When humanity don't even understand what you're going through, God does. That's why it's called the Comforter, the Father of Mercy, and the God of all comforts. Every individual, He comforts uniquely to satisfy His will for your life. Trust him. Trust the spirit of truth. Trust the comfort. That will be with you. And to the very end of it all, that will never give you more than you can be. That will leave God room and provide in ways you can't even imagine. He's faithful. And he's always forgotten. The Bible says his mercies are new every morning.
Yes. Yes. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you. We honor you, we worship you, we praise you, we exalt you, we acknowledge you, we love you, we trust you, and we reverence your holy and your righteous name. We thank you for your spirit of truth. We thank you for your revelation of truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen.